Hey everyone, Alan Minro here today with a Unity 3D game optimization tutorial. And today we're going to talk about uh, draw calls. Now there's other things to worry about when trying to get a game optimized for mobile devices or just to have them efficient such as uh, you're going to want to look at light mapping, uh, triangle counts, uh, texture resolution. Uh, but today we're going to talk about draw call and a draw call is when a CPU sends out a request to the graphics card to tell it how to display an object. So for instance, on the left hand side here we have a wall, it's wall underscore R2. It has a mesh render, which means it's going to have a draw call. And what does it look like? Well, the wall 2 is its material and it has a one-to-one -one texture resolution. So we have a few other objects that are just like that. Uh, upon development, uh, most artists will develop an asset one-to-one, -one, get it approved uh, through their production pipeline and be done with it. Um, however, what we want in an ideal situation is for all objects to use one material because, like we said with a draw call, it will ask the computer how to figure it out and the computer or the graphics card and the graphics card will send it back and say this is how you do it. Now, if uh, the objects are all using the same material, then the CPU doesn't have to ask more than once. It just says, okay, well thanks for telling me I know how to do this. And what it will do is for all the objects that are using the same material, it will call it a static batch and um, that's what we want to uh, achieve in this uh, so right now we've got four objects four different materials and actually one of our objects is a door the door has one two three four five pieces inside of it so it alone is five draw calls um, because these objects aren't told to be static now if we go ahead and tell the door to be static this will become one draw call and I'll, I'll show you how where we see the draw call information so to identify how many draw calls, I'm going to count them out. We're going to have one, two, three, and then five for this. So that's eight draw calls. If I go over to the game tab, open up the stats, you will see under, we have a few elements here to look at, frame rate and texture resolution, dimensions and all that. But uh, we want to look at draw calls and save by batching. And you'll see that we have eight draw calls. That's one for each element plus five for this one in here because right, the door has five pieces to it. That's eight draw calls. Now, if we were to go over to the door and tell all its children to be static, that will tell Unity that, hey, okay, I can go ahead and batch these because these are not going to be moving, so this will be uh, one draw call. So if we go over to game and take a look at the stats, you'll see that we have eight draw calls. Now wait, wasn't I supposed to only cut that in half? Well, that only happens during runtime. So if we go ahead and hit play, you'll see that our draw calls went to four and then four of those pieces of the door so all but one became batched because the computer said okay for the frame how do I render this the graphics card came back and said this is how you do it and the computer okay went and looked at the left door and said wait, wait how do I oh wait no I don't need to know how to do this I already know how you just told me so it's that it saves it's in this batching so what we optimally want to do though in this entire environment these other walls aren't moving either so why can't we just have one draw call there no, nothing's moving so what we want to do is we want to create what's called a texture atlas but to create a texture atlas we need to alter the object's UVs and create a texture that has all the textures in one uh, square texture so or power of two texture in our case we designed everything at one to one and it'd be really hard to start out from the beginning asking your other graphic artists say listen you uh, you make yours uh, 5 or 1024, but only put them in a small section of the 1 to 1 ratio in your UV space. Uh, you, there's no way you're going to be able to go back and forth and figure out, okay, I'll, I'll use this quadrant, you use that quadrant. So it is okay to build 1 to 1, and when you're done, you can use scripts out there that can go ahead and build them all into one texture sheet for you. And then you're like, well, no, no, I don't want to readjust all my UVs to do that. Well, there's scripts that will do that part also. Um, moving forward, we are going to go about how to do this for free. Uh, which is some stuff, a uh, script off script spot for those who want to uh, use, uh, have different software such as Maya or 3D Code or whatever, your Cinema 4D, whatever you're using. Um, you can use a texture packing software. Just type in texture packer into Google. And there's a free version of the software. It does a great job, packs your textures based on a few criteria that you give it. But it also export out an XML file or any sort of file for whatever game engine you're using that holds on to the information and says, hey, look, I took this texture and I put it here, so I want you to move its UVs here. So uh, Unity can actually intercept that text data and alter UVs right inside the game engine, opposed to doing it in your uh, 3D proprietary software. Um, that plugin can be found on the Unity store. It's called same thing. It's called Texture Packer. I believe it's 15 bucks. So 
for 15 bucks you can do this all in unity automatically generated but i'm going to show you how to do it for free using 3d studio max so what we need to do is you have to get all these objects brought into 3d studio max and um, merged in there now we're not going to be saving this file out we're just using this just to alter the uvs uh, get the texture atlas set up and export them once more time out um, you always want to alter your model and textures in the original max files that you created this process will just have to be done each time you make an alter okay so i have all my objects brought into 3d studio max uh... the only difference is that uh, my door was actually had a uh, helper object uh, controlling some pieces on it and that's actually for a, a future tutorial so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the texture atlas for all this alter the UVs and then what we're going to do is just go back to the original door file alter its UVs to match the new texture atlas and export it out so that's a lot of talking let's just go ahead and get started here so we have everything in the scene we need to go get the script the script is over at script spot called text texture atlas generator it was created by 3d io you just go ahead and download that store it out somewhere on your computer and you can see an example of what's going to happen it takes the entire scene creates all the textures into a, uh, a power of two texture sheet and uh, exports it out and then also alter all your uvs in your scene okay so with the texture or the uh, script downloaded you can go ahead and run with uh, max script so just run it and nothing will happen you just have to set a hotkey for it so once it's run you customize user interface uh, under the category 3d io just give it a hotkey i use control shift t all right so select all your objects in your scene and there's a few criteria you got to follow in order to get the texture atlas generator working is uh you can only do this to objects with a diffuse channel and that's fine don't worry about the normal map and stuff like that you can uh, plug them into the fuse channel after this and create an atlas for the normal map and it will keep laying them out the same way uh, objects all have to be uh, editable poly uh, they can't have weird modifier stacks on them so there is a few limitations to the script but the process outweighs the cons of setting it up a little bit here so I'm gonna go ahead and just run my texture packer so my control shift T um, you can set up a few of these parameters the help file that comes with the script um, just take a look at it, explain what these are but what I have here is fine I'm sending the texture to the texture folder in my unity project I'm just gonna go ahead and generate texture atlas I right, just let it calculate okay so here's my texture atlas as you can see I had four objects uh, for I believe 1k textures now we have a really big texture here with each object uh, moved over to the side you'll see over here that in our scene that the objects are just using one material we actually have to manually add them in so what we'll do is we're gonna go into our material editor we're gonna create a new blank material and we will go grab that texture atlas this is just to show that it worked so click diffuse bitmap grab our texture and apply it to our objects okay so I can see that there's a few issues the script is not bug free um, I don't believe 3d IO is updating this anytime soon but uh, the, the issues are very minimal so we'll go ahead and we'll select this wall and we're just gonna take a look at these UVs and see what's wrong so open up the UV editor bring this into view for you I'll turn on my texture atlas and you can see that it's actually just shifted down a little bit too far so I'll select those move it back up into position and that is no longer a problem We'll close that out. That one's done. To do this all manually, to scale them down and pack them, this would take a very long time. So, just going in there and just moving your UVs around a little bit for this to work is, uh, is I believe, justifiable for the time that you're saving. Okay, so at this point, I just readjusted the UVs as shown there in the other object. So, just a few minor tweaks took me all but one minute and now what we need to do is just export each of these objects back over the original so I'll go ahead and do that I'm gonna leave the door for last for the door scene because we had uh, broke up the group as you see here it has a helper object a frame and uh, I just want to show the process for that um, what I'm gonna do here is I just want to go back to the original I'm actually gonna manually alter the alter the UVs here but it should be very simple because all we're gonna have to do is scale it so I'm gonna grab my material editor I'm gonna drag and drop this onto my scene and I'm gonna grab my texture atlas
turn it on in viewport and we'll just deselect that node in there and from doing that we can go and put on a UV unwrap modifier on this open up our UV editor bring it into the scene turn on texture atlas select this and element grab everything and just scale it down to fit in our case we're going to need to scale it out down like this shift it to the right And that should be pretty close. Now uh, we may have to go in and manually do some of these. It looks like they're off by a little bit here. Put that one down, this one down. Looks like they all are off by just a tiny bit. But like I said, the the amount of rework that you're doing to the UVs here is very minimal compared to, you know, like it justifies the savings that you're doing in draw calls, especially on larger scenes where you're reusing the objects over and over and over. In this case, these are procedural walls, so we would be using these over and over and over. So it closes up. We'll collapse that. All right, and we'll export this object out. Okay, so now back over in Unity, I did a little bit of file management here. Um, what I did is I, I brought in one FBX file, which would have brought in a material and a texture. But because I want to use that material and texture for everything, I uh, I broke it away from the object. I stored it into its own material folder, which is where I put the texture atlas material, and and a texture folder where you guys already seen where I put the texture atlas because that's where I exported out of the uh, the script. And then what I did is I went into each uh, FBX file, exported them one more time, but in the FBX export settings, I turned off embed media. This way, they wouldn't export out their uh, the texture FBM folder each time because we already had the texture here. We don't need that to happen. And the other thing what I did is I went into each model. I clicked on it and I went in and I swapped it out to say project wide. So now it's looking throughout the whole project to see if it can find its material. Okay, so doing that, all the objects are now using the material. Uh, let's see here. Go into scene mode. You click on this, you'll see that it's using Texture Atlas. This one's using Texture Atlas, as is this one. All the objects are recalled static, as is this one. Now, if we take a look at our texture sheet, you'll see here on the bottom that it is the four basic. Uh, four textures from before all just merged into one the UVs are all done we automated that process let's go over to game now and see if we can get the static batching to fix so we'll hit play and you will now see that this entire scene is only using one draw call seven of those are now being batched now this is only a savings of seven draw calls however on a larger scene where we have maybe 50 walls this can significantly reduce the uh, draw calls on a, our mobile device so that is the process how to do that just to recap what we did is we set up our scene in unity exactly the way we normally would one-to-one -one texture space lots of draw calls being used now we're ready for optimization it's been approved by our team lead we now go into 3d studio max we import all our objects into one scene go ahead and generate a texture atlas from them apply the texture atlas to the models after the script's been run uh, just double check that the uvs are good export them out to unity with proper file management to ensure that there's only one material in the Unity project folder along with one texture. That way we don't get 10 materials called Texture Atlas or 10 textures called Texture Atlas. We only want one because if they are using different PNG files, even though the same name, they look the exact same, Unity recognizes them as two separate textures. So we want to make sure that there's only one texture in the scene. You go ahead and throw that on all your objects, make sure that they're static. You will now utilize all those draw calls and store them into batching. Now, I will have a tutorial coming out shortly on, let's say, that door. We did want that to open, but let's say we have 10 doors in the scene. Well, we don't want to have to have 10 draw calls for every object in there. That's five pieces for the door. That's 50 draw calls just because we want to use 10 doors. There is a setup which we can follow in order to do what I would call dynamic static batching because we're doing it to dynamic objects. Also, doing it this way, we can... Uh, do light mapping so if you're interested in that tutorial uh, just check back in a few days if not it should already be there and uh, leave any comments or questions about this tutorial if you have anything and uh, I'll gladly get back to you alright well take care everyone I hope this was helpful